improving the bond with your service dog. A fairly common complaint among assistance dog owners who have family involved with the dog is that the dog prefers the company of one or more other family members. This may occur for several reasons. The family members may be more fun than you, that is, they play fun games with the dog and ask less of them behavior-wise. The dog may have a natural preference for a specific sex or type of personality as well. You may not interact with them as often or as enthusiastically as other family members. She may notice that you do not control the resources she wants or needs. You may have left her for a few weeks with another person and she disowned you. There are many other possibilities why a dog bonds to others and not you. Without a strong bond, your service dog will not be as eager to work with you and may defer to others in the home. So, what can you do to improve the bond? Two steps to try. One. For a time, maybe several months or more, ask family members to reduce their interaction with the dog. Then, once a strong bond has been formed with you, they can gradually resume some, but not all, of their activities with the dog. You keep doing the activities that the dog values most. These are the ones that have the most meaning to her. Perhaps that is feeding or play, or maybe something else. When family comes and goes, it also helps if they try to make their arrivals and departures less emotionally charged, as you would for a dog with separation anxiety. Asking family members to avoid eye contact, physical contact like petting, and not talking to the dog until after she has calmed down, about 10 minutes, helps to lessen the excitement about their arrival and departure. You will still interact normally with your dog as that enthusiasm for you is what you want to maintain. 2. Take on the role of doing things with her, providing for her needs, feeding her, training her, playing with her, exercising her, and massaging her, can all help to develop and strengthen the service dog bond. All of these things she enjoys. The more positive interaction you have with her, the more of a bond that will develop. Start with taking on, or exchanging with family, one high-value activity, then add more as needed. If you can, start with the activities that are most meaningful to your dog, as that will have the most impact on your bond. That way, once the bond has developed, there will still be some lesser value activities for family members to do. A simple way to make this easy for yourself to take the plunge is to take a trip with your dog. Out of your normal environment, your dog will need to rely on you for direction, resources such as food, walks, etc., and learns that you are the best thing since a bunny in a field. Here are some specific ideas on how to handle activities. Training. During actual training sessions, it is helpful to have family members avoid making eye contact with, speak to, or otherwise interact with your dog, except as necessary and directed by you. They should not step in and help except when you ask them to. You are the trainer and you decide what behavior you are training. They can assist physically in setting up equipment and pose as strangers for training but any interaction with the dog is directed by you unless in emergency situations. It is up to you to set your dog up for success. Your dog should look to you for direction and rewards. A great way of starting this is simply by having the other person stay in another room while you are training. If the dog is distracted by that, use a really high rate of reinforcement and then end the session. Send the dog to go say hi to the person in the other room, let them interact for 30 seconds or so, and then call the dog back for another high rate of reinforcement training session, and send her to go back to the person again at the end. Playing. You can employ the PREMAC principle anytime you interact with your dog. The PREMAC principle is simply pairing a highly desirable activity with a less desirable activity and the less desirable activity then becomes more enjoyable for the dog. What this means is that the dog sees interacting with you as less fun than, say, playing a game of fetch. If your spouse normally does that with the dog, you take it over. 
Because you become the only one playing the game with the dog, the dog starts seeing you as more fun. For some people with disabilities, activities like this may be a challenge. But if you are creative, you can find a way to adapt it to make it work for you. Instead of playing in the yard, take it to the basement where the dog can still get excited and has room to run. Can't throw a ball? Ask your child to be the thrower, but you give the cue to get it and the dog must deliver the ball back to you, your lap or your hand. Then you give the ball to your child to throw again. Your child says nothing to your dog and avoids eye contact if possible. Or, buyer asks someone to rig up a ball thrower that you control and use it in the yard. Feeding. Feeding your dog twice a day can be a bonding experience. You can either hand feed, that is, give your dog her food handful by handful, or you can ask her to do tricks or tasks, or even use the daily ration of kibble as training treats. Exercise. During sustained exercise, serotonin, a chemical made by the dog's body during heart-raising exercise, makes the dog feel good. If you are the one to provide exercise, long walks or hikes, not tossing a ball, your dog will start to associate you with exercise and feel good about being with you. Anyone in a power chair has an advantage over the rest of us as they can go more quickly as they move along. Most dogs love speed. Massage. Some dogs really like massage. Take time once a day to sit down and relax with your dog in arm's reach. Give her a gentle massage starting from the base of her ears, moving down the neck, down the back on either side of the spine, and down each leg and tail. If you find a spot that your dog enjoys, spend some time massaging there. Some dogs love the base of their neck rubbed, others the base of their tail or their belly. If you find a sensitive spot, work around it until you have a better relationship and your dog will let you lightly massage there. Feet are often sensitive spots for dogs too. You might need to be creative in how you can access your dog. Have her sit on the couch beside you or try placing her crate beside your wheelchair and have her mat on top of it and cue her to jump up. Or maybe you have a grooming table that you can use for this process. If you have trouble controlling your hand strength or fingers, move your fists in circles, or use a towel and pretend you are drying her off when she is wet. Physical contact is how the mother dog bonds with her puppies. It can work for people too. Tethering. Tethering a dog to you on a six foot line may help with small puppies, but be sure to do it for short periods only. Tethering a dog or puppy to you for long periods is exhausting for both of you and does not allow the dog the needed downtime to relax. It would be like having your service dog working for that whole time. Try to avoid sudden movements while the dog is tethered to you. Move very gradually and predictably, ideally cue your dog before you do anything. That way she at least has a chance to respond before you start to move. We find it better to simply keep your dog in the same room as you, perhaps using doors or baby gates as barriers. Place a dog bed or crate nearby so your dog has somewhere comfy to sleep while he's waiting for interaction with you. With time and other bonding activities above, you can remove the barriers and your dog will choose to stay near you. Summary. If you take the time to find out what your dog really enjoys and spend time doing those things with your dog, and the more that you can provide care, training, play, and physical interaction with your dog, the stronger your bond with your dog will be, even if there are other family members in your home.